talk about the set of real numbers. So everybody draw this box. Now, you should be asking what question? Why? No, there's no why. So we're going to talk about the set of real numbers. So, no, not why is there real numbers. That shouldn't be the question. <laughs> Why what, what? So if we're studying real numbers today, you should be thinking, no, we're going to get to that. that you're going to find that answer soon. What are real numbers? Yeah, are there numbers that are not real? That would be my <laughs> question. Are you with me? And the answer is yes. They're called imaginary numbers. You're going to study them in Algebra 2 in high school, but you got a few years. Are you with me? But there are numbers out there that are not real. They're imaginary. But anyway, okay, we'll get to that later. The real number set is made up of two items. Rational numbers and irrational. No, I made it bigger on purpose. The real, no I mean, the rational numbers have more in it than the irrational. Now, didn't we talk Friday or Thursday about what a rational number is? Yeah, Somebody refresh my memory. Uh, Lizzie? Can Any number that can be written as a fraction. fraction goes over here. Somebody tell me what an irrational is. Like negatives and... Oh, I got negatives over here. The they cannot be written Thank you. Any number that cannot be written as a fraction. So, let's talk. Inside the set of rational numbers, draw one circle, two circles. We have what we call integers. Can somebody give me an example of an integer? You've already helped me. Thank you. Man. Negative two is an integer. Give me another integer. Emma. Negative nine. Negative nine. Another integer. One third. One third would not be an integer because that is a decimal. So one third, Caden, would go out here because it's a fraction. Are you with it? Mm -hmm. So it's just a rational number. Give me another one, Emma. Six twos. Say that again. Six over two. Six over two is three. three. That actually goes in this box right here. We're going to call those whole numbers. Are you with me? Give me one more. Negative 99. Negative 99 would go in the integer column. All right. Inside of integers, we have what we call whole numbers. We've already got one whole number in there. Give me another one. Haley. Me another one. Who has not helped? Gabby. Ten. Ten. Give me one more. You've already helped. Josiah. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. What's the difference between whole numbers and integers? I don't hear anybody. Lizzie, I hear you. Um, whole, whole numbers are the number of integers because integers is the positive and negative. Good. Are you with me? That's a great definition. Integers are positives and negative whole numbers. Whole numbers don't have negatives. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. Whole numbers are what I like to think of as the counting numbers you learned when you were a little kid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, remember when you talk to kids. Y'all like my baby voice? Yes. It's pretty cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So... <laughs> so far, all these numbers that we've talked about are in the set of rational numbers. I can write that as a fraction, 10 over 1. I can write negative 99 as a fraction, negative 99 over 1. I can write any of these as a uh, fraction. Okay. What about the square root of 25? Somebody tell me where that would fit in this chart. Josiah, hold, 
whole numbers, he says. Do y'all agree with him? Yes. I do too. What's the square root of 25? Five. Five. Do y'all agree with Josiah that five goes right here? Yes. So I agree. Yep. Square root of 25 is a whole number. Good. <clears throat> now we need to talk about this a little more. I would say part of his answer belongs there, but the other part does not. It could also go in inverse because energies are both inverse and like maybe positive and negative. So very nice. Nice. Now I got a question. Y'all all agree that five times five is twenty-five? Yes. Sir. There is another answer to the square root of twenty-five. Did you know there's always two answers to a square root? Bella, I think you already know. Um, five nope. Yeah. Negative five. Yeah. Watch this. Isn't five times five 25? Yes, yes. Oh, it's just negative. What if I do negative five times negative five? What does that equal? Yeah. Positive 25 again. Because isn't a negative times a negative also a positive 25? Yeah. Yes, so when we take a square root, there are two answers. We got a positive case and a, so I'm gonna label it a little more. I'm gonna put the positive case belongs in whole numbers. Are y'all with me? Where would the negative case go? Integers. Integers. Very nice, all right. So, give me a few more that belong out here in just the rational number that are not integers or whole numbers. Somebody who hadn't helped me yet, Ethan. Any, 1 over 16. 1 over 16. That'll work. Give me another one. Uh, Jonathan. Anything that belongs out here that doesn't go in here or here. We've already got 1 over 16 and 1 over 3. Sure. Does it have to be a 1 on top? No. Change the number from a 1. Make it a different number. 3 over 11. That'll work. Give me another one. Good. Do they have to be positive? All y'all have given me so far is positive numbers. Could she say, have said negative 7 over 12? Yes. Yeah, they can be positive or negative. All right. And I think that's a fairly decent list so far. Are you with me? Okay. We've got a good idea of what whole numbers are. We've got a good idea of what integers are, and we've got a good idea of what rationals are. These are the fractions. These are positive and negative whole numbers. These are just the positive whole numbers. All right, let's jump over to the irrational column. Somebody give me an example of an irrational number. What's the famous one? Who remembers the famous one? Pi. Pi. Pi is the famous irrational number. Does anybody remember another one? I'll give you one. Uh, hang on, let's do one more. Square root of 36. Where would that go? Oh, yep. You all agree with Gabby, it's rational? Mm -hmm. And then the negative case would be integers? Yeah. Hello? All right, so let's put square root of 36 here. I'm going to put negative square root of 36 here. All right, what about a number between square root of 25 and the square root of 36, like square root of 30? Where would the square root of 30 fit? Any number between the perfect squares, like square root of 25 is 5, square root of 36 is 6. If I pick any number between 25 and 36, and take the square root of it, it is automatically irrational. It goes over here. So give me another irrational number. Joseph. Um, negative 5 over 2. Well, we were just talking about any number between here and here would be irrational. So give me another one. I already picked 30. You can't pick square root of 30. That's mine. Perfect. What, just 27? There we go, the square root of 27. All right, can anybody give me another one that's not between these two? Lily. Um, square root of 32. 
30. That's between these two. Give me one that's not between these. 29. That's still between 25 and 36. Not between? I don't want any more between them. We've already got two between them. Okay, that'll work. That's not between them. Thank you. Emma, give me one more. Um, square root of negative 61. Okay, we can't put a negative inside the square root. Let's talk about that. It always has to be positive. Well, let's talk about it. I'm going to make it a nice one. Tell me what number times itself gives me negative 25. Bella. 5 times negative. That, that is not a number times itself. It has to be the same number. <laughs> Her face was priceless. She said, oh, oh, oh. well, then you can't. I agree. I like that face. She just discovered a rule of math. You cannot put a negative inside the square root. Now, you can put one outside, though. Yeah, she's like, that's what I meant. <laughs> Good. You actually helped us discover another rule. We can put a negative out here, because now we can take the square root of 25. Are you with me? Which is 5. And we can multiply 5 times this negative. negative. The answer would be negative 5. Do you all agree? But I cannot put it inside. Here's why. 5 times 5 is what? Positive. Negative 5 times negative 5 is also positive. positive. So a little rule we just discovered in math. There can never be a negative inside the square root. It is impossible, like Bella said. She goes, you can't do that. She's right. Yes? Would that be an example of one of those imaginary numbers that you're talking about? Yes. Oh. This is an imaginary number, which you're not going to learn until you get to Algebra 2 high school. And her face was good, too. I love to see y'all's faces. <laughs> she just lifted one eyebrow. I can't do that. I'm not talented enough. Yeah, she, was, she did it naturally. She was like... Okay. All right. Good questions here. Any others? All right, so keep in mind, today... We're going to be looking at specific examples of rationals and irrationals. And these two items, what do they make up? Of real numbers. Good. So all of these numbers put together in one big box are called the real number system. Yes. So if you make another box, it would be imaginary? There is another box called imaginary, yes. But only zero, zero, right? Zero. Where does zero fit in? That is whole. Whole? Mm -hmm. Or integers? Whole. The great debate. Whole. Well, I would say whole. Well, isn't there a circle usually in between whole? Yeah, there's a place there. Okay, there is another set called the counting numbers, but I'm going to go with, it's a long time debate. I'm going to put zero in the whole numbers because the counting numbers are very similar to the whole numbers, except if you look it up, the whole numbers say all the counting numbers plus zero. Are you with me? Okay. So zero, we'll put it in the whole column. Right there. Questions? Is zero negative? No. Is it positive? No. no. It's neutral. It's neither positive nor negative. It's the only number that is not positive or negative. Does that make sense? Any questions? Keep that chart handy today. It's going to come in very handy on your homework.